On this Ask Whitetail Instinct, we're going to talk about our podcasting setup just a little bit and then go into a viewer map scout. So our first question here, we're just going to touch on it real quick, is from Trevi Bumps. He says, can you guys touch on your video podcast setup a little bit? It seems like it's really quite simple compared to others I watch, but the quality of the audio and the video is great. So really basically it's just these two microphones that plug in to our computer and uh, hook up to Adobe Audition is the application that we use to record the audio. So just two $50 mics plug in USB to our computers and that's what we use. Pretty yep. simple. They're just USB mics, just like you'd plug in a charger or a USB drive or anything, plug right into the side of your computer, and it's that simple. And their Marin's Professional Pod Pack was the actual microphones that we got off Amazon, and that's all it is. They plug in, you get them hooked up to the Adobe Audition, and start talking. Yep, you don't need like the fancy headsets you see everybody wear and then plug it into this big audio mixer and stuff like that. I mean, can you use that? Yes. But like when you're on a budget trying to just make a podcast and get started, there's no need to spend a ridiculous amount of money just to get the same quality of audio that you can get with a $50 mic. And it's more about the information that you're sharing than if your audio is real crisp. Yeah. And you don't even need Adobe Edition if you didn't want to. I think if you're running two mics, it works out a lot better. But if you're running one just by yourself, you can just plug it into the application that comes with your computer. And record the your audio. voice recording software that comes with your computer. Yep. So it's really pretty simple. We can take it anywhere like we are now. We're somewhere different for this set. We're in Chance's apartment. So take it anywhere with us. Pretty simple. Pretty cheap for the guy that's starting out and wants to do podcasts or doing something like us. Yeah. And like you said, the audio is crisp and clear. The camera... It's just the same camera we used to film hunts. It's just sitting there, not moving. So yep. that's all it is, is a uh, camera. You could use a DSLR camera, any type of camera. GoPro. Sim- yeah, you can use a GoPro uh, and a simple $50 microphone and the computer you probably already have anyways, and hook it up and you're good to go. Yep, gets the job done. Cheap and affordable for anybody that's wanting to start and do their own podcast. But we're going to dive in to our map scout now. A viewer, Adam McCarthy, sent us a map from uh, South Dakota. So an interesting place to do a map scout of. We've never looked at the maps yet, so we kind of went in blind to this so that we could share our thoughts and how we do it without having looked at it before. So we'll kind of be staring at our computers a little bit more because we'll be looking at Google Earth and then we'll throw maps up over this video so that you guys can see what we're talking about. Yeah, and if you have a map you want us to scout, send it in. We'll look at it. We can put it on the video. If you'd like us to put it on the video, of course, we'll eliminate anything that's going to give away where the property is, if it's public or anything like that. Yep. We got so, we got another one in just the other day from somebody in Ohio, so we'll be getting to that one as well, as well as all the other Ask White Till Instinct questions that we get. So like Chance just said, any maps, any questions, drop them below, and we'll probably see your question in one of these videos. Yeah, and again, like questions on what we're doing here, drop them in the comments. And so we can dive on into scouting this. Like Brody said, we've never seen it before i all i did was mark the boundaries on it when brody gave me the coordinates of it so that's all i've ever done yep. on it to do it and like brody said south dakota so it's this property is kind of river bottom farm country yep is what we're looking at scouting this time so which is something we haunt quite a bit here in nebraska yep. similar flat river bottom with crop fields all around it and it seems uh, initially kind of marshy has some marsh habitat the big pond there in the middle, even with some food plots and different stuff. So the habitat, actually, like initially looking at it, is really diverse and really different. Like it looks like a pretty sweet place to hunt. So I looked at it here, and it looks like it's about 150 acres, which is pretty similar to about the size of properties that we're hunting here in Nebraska. Sometimes we get a little bit more than that. So not a very large property. So if you're interested in scouting small properties and how you hunt small pieces of public land, this is probably a really good property for you. So. What's your initial thoughts when you look at it? Mine is I see all these rivers that are running through there, little creeks. They're going to act as deterrent for a lot of hunters getting back to that, what would it be, southwest corner? When I looked at it, the place I would go first is that southwest corner. Yeah, and that's just purely based off access. Like just from a broad standpoint, we're looking at access. It looks like the only access I think he told me was down there where that bridge is, so it would be the southeast yeah, corner. Yeah, you can see the road running yeah, down there. Yeah, there's an access road. He says that's the only place for access. So 
we look for that, try to find that access, and then get as far away from it as you can, just as a general rule of thumb. But I like that pond. I don't know. You'd have to get in there and scout. Sometimes people overlook those ponds and may not hunt there. So you can look at that pond. On your, if you scout it, scout your way back. It's only 150 acres. Yeah, you should be able you to can... cover it good with a scout. But scout your way back past that pond and see if people are overlooking that pond. Because, I mean, right away they have to cross a river to get to that pond. Yeah, if you want to go anywhere to the southwest corner, you got to cross some sort of marsh once or twice or that little creaky marsh thing that runs through Mm -hmm. there so and i think uh adam had mentioned to me about kayaking in and maybe kayaking down that river which would be perfect yep and it's hard to tell maybe other hunters are doing that same thing so that's just something you're gonna have to figure out but initially we're gonna go with the fact that a lot of people aren't kayaking down that or crossing that kind of creek a couple times and there's ag looks like there's ag to the south of it pretty much everywhere on every side so picking a food source to go off of probably isn't I mean, you can do it, but they're going to go anywhere, 18 different directions once they get up out of their bed. So I guess the first thing, like I said, that I noticed was the southwest corner. One, it's going to be hard to get to. And two, it just looks like it has a bunch of different uh, terrain types and habitat Mm -hmm. types that all kind of come together. So that'd be where I would head first. I'd just walk where you said that access is in the southeast corner. I'd cross that little creek and then walk along the river. And go straight back to that southwest corner. Yep. And if you look at that southwest corner that Chance is talking about, it kind of makes a little peninsula there. So what we're expecting is the deer are going to bed on that peninsula with an east wind. So they're going to have an east wind at their back blowing straight out into that field. So they're going to bed on the edge of this transition here in that peninsula looking towards that ag field that you can see having that east wind at their back. And if you look at this ag field right here, you can see some trails that are coming up off the river that you can see there. So that kind of leads you to think that maybe they are bedding here in this peninsula and then crossing out into this ag field. Good uh, place to maybe, if you can, drive this road right here during the summer and see if you can't see bucks uh, in velvet out there. I guess the spot where I would probably set up, I mean, you have that food plot just to the north there, and more than likely someone has a tree stand somewhere close to that. Because if you look at the access like Chance is talking about, you can park down there and walk the, all the way around without getting in water and get to that food plot, which is probably what most people are doing. So someone, I'm guessing someone's got a tree stand on that food plot. So what you want to do and what we would do, move off that food plot, that uh, thin strip of trees to the south of that food plot on the other side, kind of right next to the river. That's where I would hang a tree stand. Just because, one, you're farther away from that food plot, so any deer that's walking through there and wants to go to that food plot, you're going to get them before the person on the field does. And your farther bucks tend to bed farther away from food sources and stuff like that. So you're going to get in there closer to where they're going to bed. Mm-hmm. If a buck is going to bed, it's going to be along that river in that thin little strip of trees there. So you're, I'm guessing, like Chance just said, along a lot of those food plots, you're going to see a lot of stands because up in that northeast corner, people can't, or there's no water, nothing, no barrier to their access. There's going to be a lot of stands up in this area, so our instinct would be to push past that stuff. Yeah, you want to go that next layer deeper yeah. than what everybody else is hunting, mm-hmm. and that's when you start to get into the some of the good stuff, is if you just go mm-hmm. that one layer deeper. So you're at that food plot, that's where everybody else is. That next layer deeper is right there along that river. Yeah, and if you look, stuff, the so. stuff along the western edge is all real swampy stuff kind of swamp ground, good diverse habitat of a bunch of different stuff. That's where me and Chance would probably spend most of our time. It's right along that western edge. A lot of those people that are hunting this property probably are not walking that far back. Because what's the distance from that top access? It's almost a mile. So a lot of people are not walking from this north access all the way back into that swamp stuff. That stuff on the western side for me is what I'm looking at. Is that similar to where your spot was? I mean, if you're coming in from the east side, I'd just walk in just a tad bit and just set up. Mm-hmm. And if you want to, I'd walk in, go walk right through that food plot, not even worry about it. Yep. And then I'd set up on the northern edge of that thin strip of trees there on the very southwest corner. Because anything that's bedded in the peninsula to the west that's on the private land, if they're coming out of there, they're going to walk right through there. So that'd be the two places I would set up for that southwest corner. Yeah, most of that uh, that west edge is going to be, I think, probably your 
your ticket where you're going to find some of the good stuff especially if you look at the northwest side that's what connects to a lot of this other stuff up that river so if you have any travel during the rut they're probably coming down some of that stuff following the edge of that river right there and then if you move up that uh, western side like where that food plot is if you go straight to the left of it to the west and then you'll notice there's kind of an island there with a bigger creek river on the other side that'd be another spot we'd go because you have to cross that creek again it's close to that food plot but anything that's going to come to that food plot that's bedded over there is probably mm -hmm. in that little island so the hard part with that is being able to get in without them seeing you but that all that takes is getting in scouting it picking out what because there's quite a few trees on there, but there's not a whole lot. There's going to be some beds right underneath some of the high spots where those trees are growing. So just mm -hmm. find out where they're bedded. So if you can come in with a south wind, if you can sneak in along that food plot, cross that creek, and come up from the south side with the wind blowing from the north, if there's anything bedded in that little tip of that island, then you'll be set up perfect for it. And I see a few trails going, crossing in and out of there too, so... That would be another spot you can go look and scout and see if there's any beds or rubs mm -hmm. or scrapes or anything in there. So Yeah, and like Chance is talking about, a lot of that stuff swampy. But if you can go in there and look for those high spots, especially on all those little islands that Chance had just talked about. I mean, there's like one island here. There's kind of an island here. And even that peninsula, find some of that high ground and find that buck bedding in there and that swampy stuff. And then you'll be golden because you know right where they're bedding. You can see those trails where they're getting up and you can set up on them. I mean, like we just mentioned, there's another spot just to the northwest of that uh, food plot that's kind of in the middle of the property there. There's another little island there with a bunch of trees on it. It's another one. Just go in, scout, and look for buck beds. See if there's deer bedded in there. And then I'll, after that, once you know where that bed is, get in it. See what the deer can see from that spot. Figure out how you can access it. Because you might have to walk all the way around to the north and come in from a completely different direction. But if there's stuff bedded in there, and I bet there is then it's just a matter of figuring out your access to get mm -hmm. to it. But that'd be another spot. So pretty much work your way from the south, those spots we mentioned first, work your way up that west Western side edge. because that's the marshy terrain. That's the more Buck diverse terrain. There's tons of transitions in there. There's going to be rubs and scrapes, I'm sure, up that up that western side. So then it's just a matter of breaking off that mm -hmm. that sign and finding the beds and there's going to be beds in there so that's what we yeah. would how we would go about scouting it and we try to find the transitions that are on there so if we're focusing here on this western side then we'd find transitions in there but once you get in there and you're scouting you'll be able to see those transitions a little bit better like where that must be probably canary grass and um, meets the hardwoods and different marsh grass meets hardwoods follow some of those transitions looking for rubs that lead back into that bedding so once you get in there Adam can start looking for some of those transitions that are in there, looking for those scrapes, those rub lines, and set up on those. Or at least scout those so that maybe you can find places to set up on. Especially in this, in the marshy stuff, what we're looking for is if there's a tree, there's a high spot in that marsh. So if a deer is going to bed in that marshy area, he's not going to bed where it's wet because he doesn't want to be wet. Mm -hmm. Or any deer, a doe, a buck, whatever. So if you can just hit those trees as you're walking, more than likely there's going to be beds underneath mm -hmm. of them. So yeah, that's just one tip from, in that marshy type terrain. For me, when I was with the guys at the hunting public, there was a big marsh that we hunted. And like that was the place that was easiest for me as a new hunter to hunting with buck beds to figure out. They're going to be, find those lone trees out in the middle of the marsh. That's where they're going to be. You find that high ground, that's where they're going to be. And on the point of those little peninsulas that stick out into the marsh. So those are places that you can look for, for buck beds in marsh. And it seems a little bit easier for people like myself when I was there that are new to finding buck beds to find them in that marsh terrain. So hopefully that helps add them out, try to find some of those things. And then stuff can start clicking when he finds them in the marsh that he can use to hunt the rest of the property. But really the key for this one is getting away from access. And I mean, it's like the perfect property for talking about getting away from access because all of those little creeks and rivers and marsh terrain that runs through there, people are not going to walk through that. And I bet when he gets in there and scouts it, he's going to see why people aren't walking back there. But if yeah. you can find a way to do it and get yourself back there, that's going to be the ticket here on this property is hunting that western side, crossing all those creeks that people aren't crossing and getting back into some of that good stuff. So any creative way you can find to get access to be able to cross those creeks, to cross the swampy stuff, is going to help you out because other guys aren't going to be able to, or not going to mm -hmm. want to do that anyways. We're kind of eliminating all those food plots as well, just because that's where 
the easy access is and where we expect people to be doesn't mean don't hunt them because we've hunted over food sources you just got to hunt them at the right times when you know that the hunting pressure isn't there but for this point or at this point we're kind of eliminating those food sources because we know that looks like it's probably the easiest access for people and that's what they're going to gravitate towards you can also look as you're walking or paddling down that river look for good uh, crossings as you get further here to the southwest corner might be some good river crossings to set up on and start your hunt there kind of doing observation sits in the morning catching some stuff coming back from food and then work your way back in there once you see where they're going so that's kind of what we did on our uh, public land unit the southern public land unit was setting up on that river we saw all those deer and we figured out where they were going and where they were coming in from that ag source and then worked our way back in yeah. there and found another really good spot this yep. year it's just a quick way to gain a lot of information because you know where they're coming from where they're going to what time they're doing it and all that stuff where if you're sitting in the in like in the timber in the trees you can only see what 100 yards maybe mm -hmm. before you can't see where deer are crossing but you sit along a river or a creek or something like that you can look straight down it and you know where all the deer are crossing mm -hmm. you can move work your way back in from that crossing and you know that deer went in there because you've seen it so it's just a quick yeah. way to make some quick steps and get closer to the deer you want to and looking at the map it looks like there's a lot of crossings coming off that river that goes to that ag that surrounds kind of the the west and southwest sides so make your observation sits aggressive but use them to be able to move deeper and hang and hunt your way back in there and like i was talking before to start that southwest corner i thought was a good spot to sit well you can eliminate two birds with one stone by setting up in a tree that allows you to see that southwest corner but also allows you to look down that river yep. so now if anything is coming bedding in there you mm -hmm. don't even have to go in that far and you're probably going to see them and then if anything's crossing, coming out of somewhere you didn't expect, well, now you're going to see them because mm -hmm. you can see down that whole entire yep. river. Like, if you sit in the right spot, you'll be able to see out into that ag field to the west and all the way down the river till it hits the highway. You'll see yep. any deer getting up and crossing there, mm -hmm. and then you can move from there. Yeah, like Chance just said, and I just had that thought, too. That's a good idea. You might be able to sit, like, right here or sit right here. And on those two spots, make sure you have the right wind. But with those two spots, like Chance said, you can see most of this ag field for the whole entire morning. And then from this spot here, you can see back into all this bedding. And then from down here, you can see that ag field, this ag field, and all the way back down the river towards the highway into some of that stuff by the pond. So if you sit on either side of that peninsula there, you can see a lot of bedding areas and get a good idea of where deer are moving. So if you sit there, you see deer moving back in here, then you can move up, move into that area. So that's what we do. Put that stand on your back hunt there, kind of scout your way back in there, set up on some good sign, do a real good aggressive observation sit, see if you can't see any deer or any bucks moving in certain areas, and then move yourself closer and hunt your way back, probably most likely up that western side. Like we said, it's only about 150 acres, so not too big, small piece of hunt, uh, public land, but definitely a property where you can kill nice bucks for sure. So just because it's 150 acres doesn't mean there's not uh, a buck on there that you can be happy with yeah and the key to this 150 acres is the access because there's so many creeks and swamp stuff running through there that 150 acres hunts bigger because it's harder for people to get to all the spots yep. on there so just to wrap it up we're going to focus mainly on this western side it's farther away from the access you got all those creeks and rivers that are going to prevent people from getting back in there we'll probably start with a couple observation sits that allow us to see up and down the river and into those ag fields and see if we can't see where deer are moving and then uh, hang and hunt our way back in there. So that would be our approach to hunting this. I'm sure there's some things we talked about or brushed over pretty quick that you guys might have some questions on. So if you do, just drop them in the comments below. And if we have to, we'll come back with the same map and re-answer you guys' questions that maybe we didn't get to. So questions on this or questions on anything else that you've seen in our videos that you'd like to know about, drop them below and we'll answer them. So Anything else from you on this property? Nope, that's it. That's how we'd go about doing it. So hopefully he has some luck this year. Hopefully he can go scout it. Let us know yep. what he finds and go from there. Hopefully he finds some, some bucks on there. Yep, thanks uh, Adam McCarthy for sending in uh, your map here. We were happy to look at it for you. Hopefully, like Chance said, it helps you out. You can get in there and do some scouting here this off season now and hopefully have some luck this fall. So thanks for sending in your questions, guys. Thanks for watching. If you haven't already, like this video and subscribe. Thanks for watching.